Yes, the brown cow has been extracted. Oh, man. Oh, wow. If anyone wants a brown cow, it is definitely a limited edition offer to you that you too can rock the brown cow in your Torx MSR22. Message me on Discord if you want the brown cow. I'm super pleased that we have a brown cow now. I'm actually thinking about maybe taking a picture of it. Like, Yo, John Fry, acknowledge if, I, follower. if I took a picture of it from that angle and then I made an, an emote out of it, would that be a good emote? Maybe it would for this channel. I don't know. We got compacted with the follow. Thank you. Man, I'm super happy about the brown cow. Thank you so much, Coop. Torque Sim. You guys are awesome. All right, I need to work on my uh, PFDs. So I'm going to turn on battery one, battery two. We do have the brown cow. I'm going to hit enter. I love how I have all that know your limits, like the real plane. <laughs> it's awesome. Fuel level. I'm going to turn off the uh, warnings there. Um, what did I say? 50, was it 50 gallons? I think it was 50 gallons. So it says just level with FMS knob. All right, so as you can see here... <clears throat> I'm adjusting the initial usable fuel by rotating the knob here. So that comes down and 50 is about right there. Yeah, and then we're gonna hit enter and boom, sure enough, there we go. All right, I do need to also update my stream title because we're no longer in the, um, Uh, we're no longer in the uh, TBM. So, Torque Sim SR22. Done. Okay. Take a look on the outside. Oh, that is a good looking plane. Oh, and how appropriate is that we have a Canadian uh, reg, a Canadian registration. That is pretty cool. I, I, have, a fi I have a feeling we can get a, a, a good snack air paint job done for this plane, especially if we're going to have a snack race later this fall for um, flying SR-22s. We, I think we need some, I think we need a Torx Sim as snack air livery. Kind of, I kind of dig this one. Yeah, I'm digging this one. Maple syrup can. How are you doing? How is Kevin? All right, let's go inside. I need to resize a few things here. So this needs to come down. I still haven't got this to work. But maybe with the update it will. Resize that. Nope, need to make it smaller. Need to make that taller. There we go. Bring that down to right. There's the CDI. All right, now let's bring, if I, oh, I gotta do the bracket. So if I do the, that bracket, huh, I thought that would bring out my MFD with the bezel. Oh, there we go. Okay, we are good to go now on the bezeling. 
Uh, what is a snack race? Uh, it's a competition amongst the snack air pilots for FS Economy. So if you type in uh, exclamation uh, snack race, it shows all the prizes for snack air pilots. If you're not familiar with FS Economy, you can type in exclamation FSE, FS, Foxtrot Sierra Echo, FSE. That'll give you a link to the document, or you can go to fseconomy.net. And yeah, there's the FSE, there's the guide. Uh, that talks about what FS Economy is. And then we in Snack Air have about 80 pilots right now that are all racing for the most profit in the month of August for over $500 worth of, well, up to $500 worth of giveaways. So, yeah, kind of cool. All right, I'm going to do our flight plan now. So over on Sim Toolkit Pro, that looks good there. And then under Yo, John Fly, acknowledge. I'm gonna sign back on to X Pilot. Narcotic zero zero with the follow, thank you. And under X Pilot, we're going to type in flight plan. And I'm gonna paste in the flight plan, which is YVR Victor twenty three pain direct slant golf. We're going from CYVR to KPAE. Ah, uh, what altitude should we should we be doing? If I look here at the low in route chart, we're three thousand. Yeah. No, forty five hundred is the minimum. Yeah, forty five hundred. Uh, we are flying eastbound, so let's cruise. We're only going 95 miles, so let's cruise at 7,000. Should we do, yeah, so should we do 5,000 or 7,000? Uh, we'll do 5,000 since we want to see some, some scenery. So 5,000 on the cruise, and we'll file the flight plan. Oh, not connected. Connect. Uh, SR22 is the code type. And we're doing, um, I guess we'll be snack error 5721. Connect. And I'm going to put in the comments SAL equals snack air snack air dot com file the flight number there's the snack race there's the FSE guide yep all right flight plan has been submitted uh, we're mode C no controllers are nearby we'll stay on uh, Unicom but we will come down to our uh, MFD. Make that control nine. There's five, there's nine. I'm gonna click on the flight plan button and I'm gonna highlight the cursor and the first waypoint is the VOR, uh, YVR. Yankee. Victor, Romeo, enter, and then uh, hit the menu button, go to load airway. I'm gonna choose Victor 23, which Victor 23 is down in SoCal. Uh, we're gonna uh, exit Victor 
23 at uh, pain. So that takes us all the way down there. That's perfect. And then our uh, destination is pain itself. Pain. There we go. Come over here to the uh, PFD. I'm going to click on transponder code. We're going to. Oh, it's not on yet. The plane's not on yet. I got to turn the plane on. <laughs> All right. So here's the tricky part. Um, we got fuel quantity there. I'm going to hit the uh, boost pump. We're going to hit the uh, nav light. I'm going to put the key in the ignition. I'm going to adjust the throttle, just pump it a little bit there. Uh, sorry. Uh oh. My mixture's not mapped. So we go to controls joystick. I don't know how that got unmapped. Mixture done. All right, so mixture full, pump a little bit and turn it over. Oh, it almost kicked. It's kind of like how the real plane is. Sometimes it's a little temperamental. I like that. All right, so now we're bringing back the RPM a little bit there. Let's come down to uh, the lights. Make that control three. And we'll do alternator one, alternator two, avionics on. Uh, strobe lights off. Pedo heat can be on. That's fine. Whatever. A little bit of instrument panel light. Now our transponder uh, is two zero zero zero. There we go. Any questions? We got the brown cow. Oh, we also want to show the pilot inside. So we're going to go to the aircraft menu which is right here, aircraft. And we're gonna go to maintenance, load manager. There we go, the pilot's in there. Now here's the very important part. Um, here's the very important part. For FS economy, we've got to match the fuel in the plane in this menu prior to starting FS economy or it'll start, it'll cancel thinking we're doing mid-air refueling. So I need to put in, I need to try to figure out where uh, 50 gallons is. So half of 46 is, half of 46 is 23. So I'm thinking that we're below it. So I think we're gonna be okay. Cross fingers. Apparently they're gonna fix this though. I guess there's an update. I don't first uh, officer I do not know the difference between the C245 ST5 and the LS KRA. I have no idea There is the livery generator All right, first person to speak up gets their name on the tell number. Just say that first word, per, first person to say tell. I guess Bird, you spoke up first, huh? Then I changed it to tell. <laughs> Oops. Sorry. Regenerating livery. Stand by. I'll put bird on the on the next one, right? Alright, so we got uh Birdfish. Okay. That's a good combination actually. How about fish bird?
Actually, no, he did say tell first. <laughs> he did say. <laughs> we'll get you on the news. I should have clarified. First one. Just go blue. Alright. There we go. I could, my call sign could be could be uh, birdfish or fish bird. Fish bird. And I also hope that nose wheel steering comes into play here. Wait a second. Where am I? Wow. Okay. I am far away from the runway. <laughs> November 85 BR day. That's a good one too. Tell you what, I'll change it. I'll change it to some combination in mid-flight, right? <laughs> Uh, I wish they had no, my only complaint of this aircraft is that okay yes in the real world you don't have nose wheel steering it's a free free castering it's a it, you you have to use your brakes slightly right to to do small changes small adjustments but I kind of want to cheat and have nose wheel steering be an option just for those of us that are lazy and streaming so I don't have to smash the brakes the whole time now if you do get up to like a certain RPM it will let you steer with the rudders like there's full right on the rudder and I'm, I'm at 1200 there's full and then I'm going to go full left FS economy auto login well, I gotta go to FSE login first come on bad boy log in Oh, and then on that login, uh, VATSIM disconnected us because it thought that we were lagging. Uh, anyway, if you get up to a certain RPM, like you don't have to use the brakes as much. There's full right rudder. It's barely moving. So if we bump it up to 1300 RPM, which is going probably too fast, there's full left. So you do, like I say, you do get some, some, some steering control with the rudders, but not until a higher RPM. We got an alternator two problem. It's weird. Uh, anyway, this is my favorite, uh, my favorite SR22, my favorite Cirrus uh, prop plane uh, out of all sims, all renditions, all makes, all models. This is, this is, I mean, this is the, the bee's knees. This is the cow's meow. All right, we're going to line up here. Uh, I don't believe we have any ATC on. No, we don't. Vancouver traffic. Uh, we got a, a white and green Cirrus SR22 uh, departing runway 26 left for a left crosswind departure Vancouver. Right, so uh, Lenny lights on, strobe lights on. Uh, fuel pump is on maximum. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We're gonna do um, flaps 50%. Oops, whoa. All right, we're lining up and waiting. Two six left. Is the cow part of the plane? Uh, yes, and you can take it off. And and when you purchase the torque sim, you get the white and black one. See, so you, you can take it off right there, or you can. And, and if you're very special, you get the brown cow. The brown cow. Okay. Here we go. Oh, I gotta set altimeter. Hold on. Uh, altimeter three zero zero nine. Set. All right, here we go. Uh 
Uh oh. I don't know if that's normal, but we, uh, oh crap, let me do my alias. Uh, Cirrus SR22G2, sorry. Cirrus SR22G2, immersion ruined. FS economy, start. Oh! Aircraft refueling not allowed. Flight canceled. Oh, so annoying. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it in the air. Maybe I will. Maybe I need to be at a pause. These are all the things you should be doing. There we go. Enjoy your flight. Sorry about that. That's the trick to get it to. Oh, that's the trick to get it to work. Got a manifold pressure problem. That's awesome. Sorry about that. Okay, flaps are clean. Plane is optimized for FS economy now. I'm going to sync up my heading bug by clicking in the HDB, H, HDG button. Autopilot heading mode. Uh, I'm going to climb up to 7,000. We'll do flight level change. Set it for 108 knots. That's fine. Coming out of Vancouver. Like I said, I don't have any ortho photo for this area. I, I need to tile some Vancouver ortho. We'll have or, or ortho over there pretty soon. Still don't know why I'm getting a manifold pressure light. Let's bring back the power just a little bit here. Oh, I'm going to lean some EGT. So watch this. This is very cool. So over here on the MFD, I'm going to click the system button. Actually... Map, no. Let's get rid of the flight plan. Click on the engine button. And then see that middle button right here that says, it says assist. I'm gonna click that button. And now we have this peak, right? So now we're gonna take our mixture <clears throat> and we're gonna, I'm adjusting my mixture, which is this bad boy right there. That red knob is slowly going back. I'm using it my joystick to do it. And then once that gets up to the highest it can go, then we're going to bring it back to be lean of peak. Um, and then we're going to use this measurement here and we're going to try to shoot for negative 50, uh, be uh, below peak for the optimum economy, uh, for this flight. So that's not quite peaking yet. Oh, there's the peak. There's minus 10. It's really finicky, so you got to go pretty slow. And this is like the real plane. And there's minus 35, minus 40, 45, 50. Come on, stay right there. 50. There's 50s. We'll probably do it in, in cruise. We'll get it close enough in cruise. I think you can go into the file and recolor the cow just like any other livery. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's what they did. They they recolored it. But you want to take a look at here. Here is your here is your uh, challenge. Uh, check this check this out. This is actually the file. So yeah, technically, if you go in here and and you are a uh, Photoshop or some powerful graphic person 
that knows how to do the cr proper things you could come in here and uh, change it to your uh, to your liking I, 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 I it wouldn't look very good if I did it <laughs> I don't know how to texturize like a good coupe or a Valdudes or a Gorin or yeah I've, I've recently been reading up on ROP and LOP quite interesting oh Rich of Peak and Lean of Peak I do have a high-pitched noise. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. I'm going to click on my headset button. There's my headset button. So that's on. So there we go. We're just climbing out of Vancouver. With the Fishco blue livery. What a fantastic plane. No ATC online. The Sim Toolkit Pro. How come it doesn't have the registration? Uh, let's go here. Let's see. Now we got to populate it up top. All right, there's uh, coming up to 7,000 feet. Uh, ideally, rich of peak during climb to aid in engine cooling. Okay, and then lean of peak in cruise. Makes sense. So now we're going to, I'm going to bring this down to negative. I, th I think M9 Aviation told me that the POH, believe it or not, wants minus 75. But he, he, he runs about 50 to 55, I think, so. That's what we'll do. And like I say, I got word that the uh, FS economy bug is, is going to be fixed. Uh, so I'm super happy about that. I won't we'll have to change the, that fuel level uh, to get it to work for FS Economy. That's a good looking livery. That is a fantastic looking livery. I still have a slight whine. I'm not quite sure what that's from. Could be the aerodynamics of the brown cow. I don't know. Oh, what a great plane. Uh, my boost pump is off at the moment. My boost pump is off. Flaps are up. Yo, John Fine. Acknowledge the follower. Uh, Romeo with the follow. Thank you. Romeo not Aloka with the follow. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go direct to huh. Activate. Go to nav. Take the flight plan out. Oops. Re 
redo the direct to some good looking clouds out there. Uh, this is the new one trigger. Yep. Ooh, turbulence. Yep, a little bit of turbulence going on. I can bump up the power here. So here goes, as you can see up here in the percentage of power, now that we've our lean of peak on the uh, EGT, I'll have, probably have to redo it. I'm adding some additional power here. There's 70% power. I don't want to get that manifold pressure there, so 70% of power is fine. Then we'll go back to engine. Yeah, we're minus 60 on the peak. I think we're good. Oh yeah, that's looking beautiful. That's looking beautiful. The brown cow, of course, is very, very happy. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out the right angle for the emote. Should it be like that? Maybe. All right, ground speed now up to 165. We're at 71% uh, power. Oh, manifold pressure. Bring back the power ever so slightly. Manifold pressure still on. See that light right there? The man press? I don't get it. There's 68. You'd think, you think it'd go. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, 68. There you go. Please fly over New Orleans one day. I will definitely do that. KMSY is an airport that I fly. I fly the big jets out of New Orleans. Yeah, I do. I fly uh, in a, the P3D simulator out of New Orleans, and it, and the excuse me, the new airport scenery actually has it actually has the new terminal modeled. So, is that where you're? Uh, is that where you are now, or you, did you just want to see New Orleans? New Orleans. Manifold pressure's back on. That's the nice thing about having the PFD and the MFD right in front of me is that even though I'm in an outside view, I can still manipulate the engine while doing the outside view. I can still keep my eye on errors and problems and altitudes, etc. It really wants me down at 66% 66, 66 power. It's weird. You're there now, yeah. It's 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 good looking. It's a really really good looking airport scenery for sure. We got uh, Fligth Simulator. How do you say that? Fligth Simulator with the follow. Thank you. Nolens, who dat? Yeah, I, I I went to New Orleans for the first time. I did that whole Marty. Or not, I did, didn't go during Mardi Gras, but I went into that uh, that seedy district. <laughs> it was a quite a quite a, an experience. Sparker in VR, you got to ride in a Cessna 185 float in New Orleans. That would be fun. 
I would I would be all about that. Nice to see you. Good morning, Sparker. Yep, I dig it. Sparker, I got a question for you. If you were going to run a website, nothing fancy, just a, like even maybe an internal website for corporate use, would you go with Nginx or Apache? Or do you not dabble in any of that action? On And do you use, I forget, do you use Ubuntu? Do you use Ubuntu or what iteration? I I don't recall. I think I asked that before. Yeah, I went to Bourbon Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to Bourbon Street. Yeah. Locals don't go there. They probably shouldn't. Yeah. Does it need to load balance? Uh, yes. I should probably switch tanks. Um, uh, it's actually pretty close right now. Left and right are pretty close right now. We won't switch it quite yet. Oh, you're talking about website. You're talking about website. I thought you were talking about the plane. <laughs> you use Ubuntu, but not not my feels. Okay, so you don't do the you don't do the websites then. Okay. Um. Yeah, because I got to start playing around. I got to get more and more familiar with Ubuntu. I've been playing around with it here and there, but. Uh, uh, some new things have come up at work that uh, require me to be a little more uh, versed in the world of, of Linux. So I'm going to set up more Ubuntu instances and play around with um, Nginx and Apache and Docker and all that good fun stuff. I did get Greylog and Grafana working, but that was a pretty cool project connected to my firewall. But now I've got some real-world stuff that I've got to work on and get more familiar with. So. By the way, uh, how is my audio today? Because someone said on my stream on uh, Friday, last night, they said that my audio, the quote was, my audio, there was a bit of phasing. And so the person uh, was wondering if I had two mic sources. And I looked through everything and I couldn't see any mic sources uh, other than this one. But it's uh, whenever I do have issues with my audio, please let me know. Um, yeah, I thought that was interesting. All right, we got our first request. Let's see here. I got someone requesting the brown cow livery. It's awesome. So let's give that zip file to Yep, there we go. Flying for fun. There you go. There's the, the brown cow. Audio is fine. Good, good, good. C206 station air. Thank you. Thank you, Trigger. Your install your installs use a hard drive for each OSTO to do dual, dual booting. Okay. Thank you, uh, Balint, for the audio report. Puff, thank you. Yep. And Shell, still happy to help you out. I appreciate that, Shell. What would you say, Shell? Would you say Nginx or Apache, or or what web server flavor would you would you uh, recommend to play around with? Romeo, uh, not a not a loca. How you doing? I do have Track IR. Uh, I use I used Track IR for Truck Simulator, and I have used Track IR for you know to to look this way when I'm in the pattern. You know for your left and right, downwind, etc. Um, but I stopped using it. And I think that if streamers, I think if streamers use it, it can get a little bit, uh, 
it can get a little bit distracting when a streamer uses track IR too much. Let's put it that way. All right, we're about to make a right turn here at the uh, Ha VOR. You're all in Gen X these days, less overhead. Good report, Aqua, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, hanging, I, I think a good study for someone new to flight sim, I, I, that's probably a good video to, to create. I should probably do a really simple, you know, Cessna 172 flight um, in an X-plane. Just a real basic one for, to, for someone that's brand new. But between YouTube and Twitch, I think... And Discord, so you can get a lot of help. Wow. You used to use the head tracker on Elite. Yeah, recentering is a kind of a pain. There's the turn at Neptune Massive. Look at that, gorgeous. And now we do, by the way, we do have Ortho Photo now. Check it out. Okay, tell me that is not absolutely gorgeous i mean look at mother earth oh look at that oh. both are solid web servers h apache and nginx and uh depends on your use case as to what you want, want you're wanting to achieve Yep. I'd probably go with Nginx for a new web server if you're wanting to manage and maintain it yourself. Okay. Well, I didn't have a preference for one or the other, so I might as well go the Nginx route. If it were nothing more than a static web page, I'd just throw it on S3. I don't know what S3 is. Are you talking about AWS? <laughs> so do you think 2020 will be the end of Billboard Clouds? I sure hope so. That'd be nice. There's there's Mother Earth emote. Look at, look at Mother Earth down there. I mean, seriously, does it... Look at that. That is amazing. What will that look like in the new simulator? At 7,000 feet over just north of Seattle, Washington, what will that look like? Probably pretty good, I imagine, but that's... I don't know. That, that looks pretty good to my... Oh. Does STKP have a Cirrus SR22? I, uh, you mean like a livery or the program? Because you can put in. I added an SR22 to my STKP, but a livery would be would be awesome. You know, Amazon AWS S3. Yeah, yeah. I do not have a lot of experience. I've set up file servers with both, and it seemed to be easier. Yeah, I'm gonna play around with it. Um, I do have a, I do have a uh, one one server that, for whatever reason, oh, I got boxes on my PFD. North is Buck with the follow. Thank you. Also, Captain Monty with the follow. Thank you. Uh, look at the boxes. That's cool, huh? There's the boxes. That uh, this is not Ortho 4XP. It is Ortho Photo, but it's uh, this is Orbex. Oh, golf course. This is Orbex True Earth Washington. So it's it's not only Ortho Photo, but it Ortho Imagery, but it's it's color corrected. The contrast is corrected. And it's got their awesome trees everywhere. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. It's like I'm flying in, in, in the Seattle, Washington area. There's the golf course. Let's see if I can add uh, snacks to Scotty.
that worked. This looks amazing. Uh, is this the new Microsoft Flight Simulator? I'm very new to Flight Sim World. Uh, North, this is X-Plane 11. And the new simulator uh, comes out uh, August 18th. There are some beta uh, testing, alpha and beta testing going on right now. I've been doing the alpha test. I haven't done the beta testing yet, but I've done the alpha. Um, and again, it comes out on the 18th, which means that I'll be able to stream the new flight simulator on the 18th. Uh, yeah, but this is X.11 and it looks fantastic. And I'm flying in the Torque Sim SR-22. It's a brand new aircraft release. It's an addition to the simulator. And I've got the awesome brown cow passenger. And we're flying, we, f we started off in Vancouver and we're flying down to Payne Field. As you can see at the top there. Yeah. So I think we're gonna, I think over the next few weeks and months, we're gonna get a lot of people who are, are brand new to uh, flight simulation. And uh, pff, yeah, we're gonna welcome you with open arms. Uh, I, as I've said three times already on the stream, if you're new to Flight Sim, you know, YouTube and Twitch are your friends. Discord, exclamation Discord. If you go to my Discord and you go to the support channel or one of the other, you know, relative channels and you type in, you know, hey, I, I'm, I, I, I want to start in Flight Sim, you're going to get three or four guys to pop in and say, you know what? Download the X-Plane 11 demo for free. Get a $40 joystick. Boom, you're done. You're, you're, you're flying for 15 minutes. You're limited to 15 minutes, but at least you get to go set up your joystick and get a feel of what X-Plane is like for free right now, today. And go to your Best Buy and get your little $40 joystick, your Logitech 3D Pro. But yeah, the Discord's very important. The Airbus A300 is looking good, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Which version of X-Plane 11? Uh, that, I'm on beta 16. I am on, I, I've avoided 17 for the moment, although some people here are reporting positive results in beta 17, but uh, I've stayed on beta 16. Um, it hasn't bitten me yet. You have a joystick from Space Sims? Okay, cool. Uh, do you do Star Citizen? Because if you do, you're really cool. If you don't, you can be cool. <laughs> Type in exclamation SC. I think, if you're not in Star Citizen. <laughs> is it exclamation SC or exclamation Star Citizen? I can't remember. 17's been fine for you, Puff? Okay, good report. Very, very good report. There's Star Citizen, baby. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, boss arena. I've totally done the PTU, Scotty. I'm not... I did... Uh, I haven't done the latest update, but on Tuesday night, uh, I uh, on Tuesday night I went around with Twin City Jeff, and we went around in his um, Hammerhead. We did. Uh, I was in the I was in the top turret in his brand new Hammerhead, and we did some uh, bounty missions, and we shot down a lot of, of uh, craft, and it was so fun. Oh, it was cool. And we also what was the other plane we went into? I went into his, I can't remember the other plane we went into, but the Hammerhead was fun. Oh, SE is your favorite game? Oh, awesome. Yeah, I was in it Tuesday night. Uh, I even have an org. Uh, if you do a, a search for snack on the orgs on Star Citizen, you'll find Snack Air Space Division, uh, S-N-A-K. Beta 17 is fine for Backfire M3 so far. You're enjoying it. Good, good, good report. I guess I can back up. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, Twin City Jeff. It was the Sentinel, yep. We'll be back very soon into the verse. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe tonight. Maybe tonight I'll get into the verse. Um, I kind of miss the mining. Maybe it's time for another mining run. If, if, at, at some point in the future, if we can get... How many do we need? How many do we need for that 890 jump mission, Jeff? Do, do, can we do it with five people, or do we need more? This is beautiful. Look at these clouds. Look at that ortho. This is gorgeous. I'm gonna start down, 
So here on the PFD, uh, I'm going to alt rotate the knob, as you can see up here on this upper camera. I'm going to alternate, alt <laughs> I'm going to rotate uh, down to 2,000 feet, and I'm going to hit the vertical speed, then I'm going to hit the nose down button, and we're going to descend down at 800 feet per minute. I'm also going to bring back the throttle percentage here uh, quite a bit because we don't want a yellow line. What game were you playing shooting down planes? Uh, Star Citizen. Yeah, we were. Uh, Twin City Jeff got this beautiful aircraft, uh, the Hammerhead, and we also went in the Sentinel. Um, we, uh, yeah, we were we were fighting. We were we were shooting down bad boys, bad guys, bad boys. What you gonna do? And uh, I was in the top turret, and he was the pilot, and he had missiles. I had lasers. It was fun. Star Citizen, yep. Basically, I, on this channel, I do I do about six different things. Uh, f you know, X Plane, P three D. We do. We're gonna do the new flight simulator. I do tr uh, Star Citizen. Occasionally, I'll ho I'll host a poker tournament on uh, Poker Stars, and then uh, I've been known to do trucking in the past, but I haven't done it for a while. Um, yeah, and then sometimes I'm just, just chatting. So, there's that. And I've done a little bit of Euro truck as well as American truck, but I haven't trucked for a while. All right, we're descending down 5,600 altimeter 3013. So, I'm going to rotate the barrel knob to 3013. I've got low fuel quantity. I'm going to switch tanks. So, in order to switch tanks, on the SR22, you want to hit that boost pump right there, and then we're going to rotate over here to the right tank, and then you can take that boost pump off. Then I need to check my uh, engine, so take the flight plan off, hit engine. Yeah, I think we're good on the, we're good on the EGT. It even shows density altitude on there. That's pretty cool. So, so glad to be here. Well, thank you, Blue Indian. Uh, I appreciate you checking in from Nolens, New Orleans, land of the saints. I am using the default uh, X-Plane weather engine at the moment, Sparker. I used to use Active Sky for X Plane, but I haven't for a couple months, at least, if not longer. Um, had a few issues with the X Plane uh, weather engine, and I probably need to update it because there's probably been some changes and fixes. I did update my Active Sky for P3D V5 last night. It seemed to be it seemed to be fine. Man, there was some nasty weather going into Jacksonville last night. That reminds me, I've got to, uh, I've got to cut that video for YouTube. Look at that! Look at the color of that river down there. Whew! Uh, so yeah, I'm not using anything. I am using SkyMax Pro for my clouds. Yeah, SkyMax Pro for my clouds. That looks fantastic. Um, I think we should probably do a visual approach. I'm thinking. So, let's do, well, should we do an instrument approach? We do have some cloud cover up there, but, I mean, in the real world, we obviously would be doing a uh, instrument approach. Can someone type in exclamation metar? Metar uh, K P A E Kilo Papa Alpha Echo for me in chat, please. Do you mind? Uh, I'm going to click on approach. 
it is PA. Oh, there it is. Variable at four knots. Okay. So we could do an RNAV or we could do the ILS. We'll do the ILS uh, Yankee from PAE. What's interesting is it's not letting me overlap it. That's weird. Maybe let's try the Zulu. The final. Huh. All right, we'll do the Zulu. Okay, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to put in a um, nav course or a na yeah, nav course 163 and a frequency of 109.3. So nav. Oh, nav radio is not changing. Oh, it's because I'm probably not in the sim. Well. All right, nav radio. Uh oh. My nav radio is not changing. It's com radio. Com radios are working. Oh yeah, nav radio is working. Never mind. All right, so nav radio one hundred nine point three. We got to go to nav one. One hundred nine point three, and we'll switch that over. Slow down. I need to be at. Jugba at 3000 and I'm going to go, I'm going to sync up my heading bug and go into heading mode and then I'm going to rotate just slightly to the right here. We're going to fly heading 130 and we're going to capture the localizer at WebV potentially. Uh, now I'm going to change my CDI. So as you can see here on here, I'm going to click the CDI button that changes it to localizer. And then I'm going to rotate the course knob to 163. I'm going to slow down a little bit. We're a little bit lower than we should be. Yeah, when you forget to fly for snack air. Yeah, I hear you, man. I've done that numerous times. All right, I'm going to try this early. I'm going to go ahead and select na uh, the nav button. And when I select the nav button, it comes up here with localizer in white. And then once we capture it, that'll change. And then once we catch the glide slope, it'll probably have GS in green. Uh, hopefully we capture it pretty soon here. I'll do a quick CTAF call. When you do CTAF or traffic advisory calls, you want to refrain from using um, IFR terms because you just can't assume that everyone in the pattern is an IFR rated pilot. So you you don't want to necessarily say you're on the ILS, you know, one six right. You should probably just give your distance out from the field. Uh, Payne Field, Cirrus SR22, white and green, approximately 13.9 miles out for runway 16 right at 2000, landing full stop. Payne. I, I don't know the correct call. But there's the intercept for the localizer. And you should, probably shouldn't say approximately. You should probably just say, I'll try it again here. Payne Cirrus, SR-22, white and green, 2,000 feet, 13 miles from runway 16 right, landing full stop, Payne. Approximately 13.947289, exactly. No pain, no gain. Just say, yeah, 13.9, not 0.8, not 14.0. Just say 14, 13, 14, yeah. Keep it succinct. That was a 30 degree intercept, was it? 
professional sim pilot. All right, altimeter has changed slightly, 3015. We're going to keep up our speed, 150. And uh, coming up to Jugba. Jugba. I'm going to go ahead and hit the approach button early just to test it. So when I hit the approach button, you'll see what changes here. So APR. Now we have a white GS. And in probably... I don't know when it'll kick in, but this will turn green and we'll follow the glide slope down. Which is going to be a while because I think at Jugba we're supposed to be at uh, 3,000. So we're actually, th we're going to capture from below. Are you around for the PSV event later? Uh, what time does that start? I've totally forgotten about that. And where that's in, is that in Canada? Might be fun to play, dabble around in that. Acknowledge the follower. We got Watchmaker with the follow and also Baller Battle 7 with the follow. Thank you for the follows. Yes, you will capture it later since you are a thousand feet below. Yep. That is the truth. I'm glad we did the instrument approach because this is m very marginal. This could turn not. Uh, in fact, some people would consider this not uh, VFR, but I can barely make out the lights of the airport, so maybe some people would consider this uh, VFR or marginal VFR. Boston to Toronto, 4 p.m. Eastern. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do that. What plane? Maybe I should do it in this plane. <laughs> we'll see. I've got a, I've got a few projects I got to do this afternoon. I've got to set up a camera system. You would not call this VFR. Well, some people, I guess it's up to interpretation. Some people say if you can see through the cloud, it, they, they would not call it illegal, but I, and I can see through. Now the question is, is to the, yes, to the sides, I can see, I mean, I can see the airport and I'm, I'm quite a ways out from the airport. I'm, I can see. So I guess I, I wonder it, technically it, I, it would be ideal to be IFR in this situation, but is this illegal for a VFR pilot? Definitely VFR, virtual virtual flight rules. Yeah, virtual flight rules. It's nice and sunny up there yesterday, but it's the Pacific Northwest, and this is normal weather there any time of year. Yeah. Hey, we just caught the GS, so now we got uh, glide slope is now green, as you can tell there, and it's look how it's following the boxes down. Woo! Following the boxes. So now it's up to me to do power, and uh, I also need to turn on the DME which is going to be DME. No, what was it? Um, PFD bearing. Yeah, there we go. Payne Field, Cirrus SR22, white and green, 3.3 mile final for runway 16 right, Payne. Uh, PSV is uh, power set. So if you go to powersetva.com, powersetva.com, you can... Uh, you can uh, find out about the Power Set Virtual Airline, and they're they're having the event from Boston to Toronto, and and probably back. Three statute miles visibility, five hundred below the clouds, thousand feet above the clouds, two thousand horizontally. I think we were within that uh, range, Shell. I think we were in that in that range. What do you think? I don't know. Five hundred. I think you can be in the clouds, Sparker, but you can't. You have to be able to see through them. Okay, I'm going to turn off the autopilot. Nope. Whoop. Whoop. We're going to do a no flaps landing. 
for kicks and giggles. Oh yeah, the joystick's a little sensitive. Uh, because I was parking down here, I, that's why I floated. Yeah, there's a difference between, I guess, the letter of the law and and what you should actually do. I mean, if, obviously, if you're in marginal VFR, if I, if I'm a VFR only pilot, I'm not going to be flying in marginal VFR probably. But I'm just wondering if that particular approach was via a VFR legal approach, just because we could see the airport five miles out. It looks like the Sim Toolkit Pro Bot's not working. It was butter, but it was floaty butter. <laughs> Toronto to Boston is 432? Is it really? So that'd be hard to do in an SR-22. <laughs> Uh, I also heard that PowerSet, I heard that PowerSet also got approved to be in FLAI. I'm not sure if it's available right now, but I heard that they got approved for uh, the next update of FLAI, or it's in there now. The liveries are there now. I, is that true? That's awesome. If that's yeah, I just got the update. Oh, brilliant! That is so cool. I know that they originally got turned down. Thank you for uh, flying. Because apparently, you know, apparently, uh, VAs come and go, but Power said it's here to stay. I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna park right here. I'm gonna do VIP parking. I own this whole entire hangar. It's full of, full of goodies. All right. Does anyone know who makes this airport? Uh, this is Dryzecki. Uh, actually, the way that you say it, I'll say it correctly. I've, I've Someone helped me the other day with a pronunciation guide. But um, this is a good-looking airport, actually. The terminal's down there. Yeah, this is a good looking airport. Um, I'm going to grab that pronunciation, which is There it is. Javietsky. Javietsky. That's how you pronounce it. Javietsky. <laughs> Double D. Double D. Yeah. Zhervesky. Zhervayetsky. Zhervayetsky. There it is. Whoop, there it is. We got Modernator and we got Ch Child of Butter. We got the Child of Butter with us. Thank you guys for the follows. Appreciate that very much. Oh, that's another thing we need to celebrate. I'll show a replay of the of that landing, that butter landing that was afloat from from all get out. But I want to celebrate something. We crossed sixteen thousand followers. We crossed sixteen thousand followers on the Jawfly channel. Thank you guys. Thank you. Shove, but with a J sound instead of an S sound. Yetsky. So, shove. What's shove? Jov, Jovetsky. Jov, 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 Jovet. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah, we crossed 16,000. 
pretty happy about that. That was uh, it's taken us a while. We've we've gained a few pounds over the years, and you guys are still sticking with us. For, and we are meeting new people. And like we were talking about earlier, we got these new we got these new sim friends that are coming in, and Mark, Microsoft is going to do one heck of a uh, is going to do one heck of a marketing job. And I and uh, there's going to be a, tri a trickle down effect, I think, into X Plane and P3D. I think people are going to love the Mi Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I think you'll see a few that will venture out into X-Plane a little bit. Maybe, I don't know. P, I don't know. Is P3D here to stay? Maybe. I love P3D. I had so much fun last night in P3D. We'll see. But thank you for following. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for bits and chat and participation. Um, it's 11.41 local time. And I think you said the PSV event is at um, two. Might might be able to do one more. 